On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a uh, go on. A blessed and wonderful Wednesday morning to each and every person out there tuning in to On The Spot News Media. No, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public and also members of the diaspora. So please like the video, share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch this now, my peeps. In the morning, I have to kick it off with some international stories where rapper, singer, songwriter Sean Kingston was brought before the courts in Florida where he was formally charged for several offenses. However, the artist was later released and banned after he was represented by his lawyers via live stream. Listen. Hey, good afternoon, Your Honor. Bob Rosenblatt, appearing for Mr. Kingston. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Zalka Bazanek appearing on behalf of uh, Kishan Anderson as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Good afternoon, sir. I have your attorneys, Mr. Rosenblatt, Ms. Bajanek on Zoom today. You are charged pursuant to a warrant as follows. Count one, organized scheme to defraud over $50,000. Count two, criminal use of personal identification information. Count three, grand theft, greater than $20,000, less than $100,000. Count four, fraud, fraud, insufficient funds check, greater than $150. Count five, grand theft, greater than $100,000. Count six, criminal use of personal identification information. Count seven, criminal use of personal identification information. Count eight, grand theft, greater than $100,000. Count nine, criminal use of personal identification information. Count 10, probation violation, felony. I do find probable cause. Now, as I stated earlier, the rapper was released on bond. So in a way, back to local style. Now, I think when we see a trend right now, all over social media, I'm going to talk about this just a few days ago where it seems as if some of the youths them in a Jamaica them can't find a correct balance there. Is either them there to one extreme or the other. So the extreme is from one side is that them dark and dunce and become knackis and clappies or menace to society. And to the next end, the man them weak out can't hold them meds. So according to this photograph, listen to what this lady here have to say about you. Man a man, man must stand up like man, man must act like man, man must behave like man, man must take decision like man, eh? You weak jelly back. Whoever make some jello cubes and put the three jello cubes in a salsa, and just shake no hand a little bit. As so, the man them a behave, you know, like three jello cubes pan a salsa. At this Jamaica narrowed down to, from one extreme to the other. So we definitely have to give thanks for the few youths and youths them. We are stand them ground. And I hold them meds and can create the balance there in a them life. Yeah, man. Give thanks. Now, the Ministry of Transport says effective immediately all ride sharing services to include that of InDrive are banned in Jamaica. Now, more of the year. 
your take on this in the comment section. So the ministry says that the applications will be banned for one year in the first instance until a new regulatory framework can be implemented. The ministry made the announcement in a directive by the minister yesterday, that's Tuesday. So in their directive, the transport ministry stated that it has instructed cable and wireless and its affiliates to restrict access to ride sharing applications, including Uber, InDrive, 876 on the go, Lyft and Ride Jamaica. The transport ministry says the move to ban ride sharing services is designed to reduce the safety risk of citizens, residents and visitors to Jamaica. Now we're going to hear from the transport minister that's Darrell Vaz as he provided a further update to the House of Representatives yesterday, Tuesday. Listen. I want to indicate that my recommendation as of today, which will obviously have to be vetted for legal purposes, is that a ban on all of those ride-sharing apps with immediate effect until such time as we can come to the table and work out properly how these apps will be regulated in terms of making sure that safety background checks of the drivers are done not only by the app the right here apps but by the jamaican authorities whether it be the police or the transport authority or whoever i have the responsibility as a minister and an elected representative protect the lives of the people and i'm saying to you and i am prepared to go to the end of the world to make sure that that ban is enforced immediately with a view of sitting down with the transport authority in fairness is already meeting with the local transport operators who have designed apps and want to implement apps for the betterment of their service no issue one thing is for sure based on what took place over the weekend and just to be very open this is just one of several cases that the police have had evidence that these ride share apps have been used for criminal activity so it's not an unfortunate loss of a life on the weekend there's several and with a letter from the police to the minister responsible for telecommunications i have a responsibility to act and i am standing here today acting as a government we are aware of the increase in popularity in the use of technology to engage personal transportation services this government is not opposed to this. However, we are adamant that the ride hailing services must operate within the ambit of the law. We have sought to engage ride hailing providers, both locally and internationally, to streamline their operations within the regulatory regime. Madam Speaker, I want to publicly state that the only overseas provider that has indicated their willingness to operate within the legal framework is Uber. They came, I summoned them, and they came from corporate office to Jamaica to sit down with me and the team to have a discussion. The Transport Authority will be meeting with the local ride-hailing entities this week. In this regard, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, in-drive remains outstanding. And I'd like to point out that in addition to the government concerns about safety and security in this environment, there are issues relating to undercutting in the market where low affairs are charged and that impacts on the tourism, the economy in general and the threat of other issues such as money laundering and terrorism. Now as I stated earlier, drop some comments in the comment section as it relates to what Minister Vaz has stated. Now we are going to talk about the incident we are going Sunday night into Monday morning where the police discovered the bodies of two men in a gully along a slip road at a near Tarrington Bridge. Rightly so. Both bodies had on a mask and they were riddled with bullets. Over 30 spent casings was recovered by the police. Them get can in them chest, in them face and them head back. So basically, that's what we call a execution style, knockings and clappings. Now in 
yesterday evening's vlog that was posted this morning. I spoke about the 29 year old Akeem Thomas presently on your screen identified as JJ. Said to be from a St. Mary address. But on the spot news media discovered that both the men, well, the 29 year old and also the 17 year old grew up along Morgan's Lane in Grand Spen. But because of issues in the community, they relocated to other areas. Now, the 17-year-old relocated to Jungle in uh, the General Arnett Gardens community. Now, the thing about this 17-year-old, it really sad where he is concerned. And why I say it really sad? Because in born and grew up in an environment that is different from what most of us have experienced. Both his mother and father came from a criminal background. The mother was a troubled teen growing up. I'm not so sure about where she's at now in life and what she's doing with herself now. But I know that at a tender age of 16, 17 years old, his mother ran foul of the law several times. I also carried a vlog about his smaller brother identified as Tete presently on your screen. His smaller brother's life was taken sometime in late 2021 by a reputed Nakis and Clappis, old dirty corner boy, known as Dudu Bops. Now for those who don't know who is Dudu Bops, here he is presently on your screen again. So for those who have been tuning into on the spot news media would have known that this criminal element would have made it on this channel mighty often. Now as I stated, the 17 year old who is presently on your screen identified as Troy Dixon but more popularly known as Moja or Momo came from a troubled past. It was brought to the attention of on the spot news media that his mother is none other than the infamous Sasha Payne. Now for those who is old enough to remember this female Sasha Payne, she had a troubled childhood. Now on your screen as far back as from 2006, she has made headlines right across Jamaica. She even made the most wanted females list some years ago. Now, as I stated, I'm not for sure what she's doing with herself now. If she has rehabilitated, if she's a changed person, I'm not for sure. But one thing for sure, she had some kids in her younger years and because of her troubled past and the fact that she was used and abused by a lot of these men that got her impregnated, she really couldn't give much motherly attention or advice to these young boys. And some of them basically was left to fend for themselves out there in these streets. And we know say out there in these streets, crab it, yeah man. The streets of Jamaica have some code where not even Google can understand. And for some little youth out there in the streets pan them own without proper parental guidance, trust me, is either six feet under are 35 to life because them are gonna turn to the one source where them see right before their very eyes every day 
which is the knackis and clappis them, pan the corners. We clean to the tea and have a big fat strap and some whole heap of crassmite around them. A dash out pan them left, right and centre. So them look pan them youth they know as the man I want to be like them. So the bigger man them just recruit them, have them under them wings and use them and refuse them. And basically, that is exactly what happened to the 17-year-old Troy Dixon and the 29-year-old Akeem Thomas. They were used by the criminal elements in the system and then they were disposed of in such horrific and crabby way. Now we now say we feel sorry for them per se, you know. Because they lived a certain type of lifestyle and in this morning's vlog we no for wanna see and pour out and I say boy I wanna feel the pain of the aunt when time she a cry because she lose her nephew. Her brother lost his life in a similar fashion. So the ones and ones them I say boy them feel her pain. You can know say she really love her nephew. But so did the many others that they made cry. So we're not really sorry that they met their demise. Because if they were still among the land of the living, they would have continued down their destructive path. And many more mothers and families would have to cry. But what we are really sorry about is the situation that that 17 year old whenever asked for their born inner he was doomed from birth literally because he was left out there to fend for himself and we all know say it's a dog eat dog type of society we live in a so i just said all of that for said this you know to all of the other young youth them out there. I want to know look upon them other young youth like on self. The 15 and the 16 year old them. Because his older brother that would have been 18 this year which is one year older than he is or was. Lose film three pints at a tender age too. So I want to know look within on self and look and these other young persons just like on self. If you know I live a certain lifestyle, you no need to stop. Because it now go end up no way different than how it ended up for them. Now when you remember the knockings and clappings are going right topside, tranquility, with the police where them slap with some of the boy them and some of them get to and the police them retrieve some guns. They were also among the criminal elements that got away. The 29 year old came back and would have told his story and people would have heard of it. So in the same peeps, they were living really careless with their lives and was being very destructive to our society. So whilst they got what was inevitably coming to them, we still no one, no other youth grew up under them kind of conditions the way mother and father are living toxic lifestyle in which it just leave the young youth them like Try Dixon hopeless and to all of the young girl them out there who love to talk about gunman in she old she like that type of situation you no need to start look up and seek and find more decent enough youth and youth a regular youth we have him regular 9 to 5 and I live an upstanding life for lie with and leave the dirty corner boy them alone because if you don't your sons and daughters are going to become a product of the environment and that's 
the best way I have really right now to put it forward to you. I hope you know, overstand exactly what Underspot News Media I try to push towards so you can get a better feel and better understanding of how society is. But anyway, I could continue. Now, I posted this photograph presently on your screen the other day and stated that he was missing. But his car was recovered with red substance resembling blood in it. Now, his lifeless body was also discovered by the police in a shallow grave in an area of Portmore known as South Barrow yesterday. His body was found in a densely wooded area with his head completely severed. Poor me, I tell my peeps. The thing rough. And this is the Jamaica that we are presently living in. Now over there in the parish of St. Elizabeth, a teacher is presently facing Gun charges. Yeah, man. Now, the St. Elizabeth police seized an illegal firearm and 20 rounds of ammunition during an operation along the Pedro main roads on Sunday. Now, uh, charges were laid against D'Angelo Garden, said to be 31 years old and a teacher of a Lindsay address in St. Catherine. It was reported that sometime around 1 a.m., a white Nissan motor vehicle being driven by Mr. Garden was signaled to stop by the police. During a search of the vehicle, an illegal 9mm Rugal pistol loaded with 8 live 9mm rounds was found in his possession. 12 9mm rounds were also found inside a bag. Investigations led the police to an address associated with the suspect and an additional 49 rounds of ammunition were seized. A man who was at the property was also taken into police custody in relation to the ammunition fine. Now we are going to also hear from superintendent in charge of the St. Elizabeth Police Division. That is Superintendent Coleridge Minto. As he speaks on three firearms that was also seized by the police in an operation yeah. listen at about 2 p.m on monday a team from the area 3 highway patrol was conducting an operation along the goshen main road a white nissan motor car traveling in a westerly direction towards santa cruz was signaled to stop the driver complied a search of the vehicle revealed three illegal firearms two taros nine millimeter pistols along with one Smith & Wesson revolver. There were also two magazines inside the vehicle. The driver was arrested and the motor vehicle seized. This brings to four firearms recovered in a 24-hour period. We will continue our operations across the parish to ensure that the uh, illegal weapons are removed off the streets and persons are held responsible for their actions. We continue to appeal to the public and members of this parish that any information they have can share through 119, Crime Startup 311, or the nearest police station. Now, over there in the neighboring parish of Westmoreland, two men are no longer among the land of the living as their lives was taken in a hail of bullets by criminal elements, and another man said to be critically injured in Garden District, White House in Westmoreland on Monday. Now the deceased men have since been identified as 24-year-old Santino Brown to the right of your screen and 40-year-old businessman Carl Linton Walker, both said to be of a Garden District address in Westmoreland. Now the police report suggests that Mr. Brown and Mr. Walker were standing along the roadway after offering support to a friend who had recently lost his wife. 
It is said that a grey Toyota Axio motor vehicle pulled up and two armed criminal elements alighted from the motor vehicle and opened gunfire in the direction of all three men. It is said that the men ran towards a nearby shop to take cover. It is said that the criminal elements gave chase and continued to fire. Mr. Brown subsequently got hit by the bullets and collapsed in the front section of the shop and the criminal elements escaped in the waiting motor vehicle. When the police arrived, Mr. Brown was seen laying in a pool of you-know-what with what appears to be some woolly pakana wounds to the upper body, which is the chest, neck and head. Mr. Walker received some kana wounds to his chest. The third man who was seriously injured was a customer at the shop that the men ran towards and he was inside purchasing items at the time when the gunshot rang out. It is said that he received wounds to the right leg and abdomen. All three were transported to the hospital where Brown and Walker was pronounced, you know what, and the other man admitted in serious condition. Now information reaching on the Spot News Media would suggest that the 24-year-old Santino Brown was indeed the intended target as he was on bail for a firearm-related charge. So he is definitely all knackis and clappies and rivals just come pull up on him and name him food and broke the plate. We're not for sure if Carl Linton Walker is involved in any wrongdoing, but who knows, he was in the immediate company of Santino, so any game can play. One thing for sure, the man who did in the shop is totally innocent. Poor me, I tell you my peeps. The thing rough, but anyway, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in a subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.